What's up? I hope you're having a good day. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk you through the code for these animated scrolling marquees. Uh, yeah, these are great for showcasing logos, tech icons like I've done here, testimonials, or even large type that you want to be uh, looping across the screen in a, in a banner. You can see when it's hovered, it slows down smoothly. It's responsive, no, no side scrolling. Okay, let's dive into the code. I've imported my assets the icons that I'm going to be using, put them into an array, which is the type static image data because this is a Next.js application and we'll be using these sources on the next image. I've mapped them twice just because it's quite a short list and yeah, they on a wider screen there might not be enough icons. So map them into, into a single array. And then basically what we need to do is we need to map those elements into a single list here. And if I take, if I cut away some of the code, We we'll start with a static list, and the list is placed inside the container that will move, and it's placed inside it twice. And so this way, when we animate it, we move it halfway along, and then we immediately jump back to the start, move it halfway along again. Uh, and by having the list there twice, once it when it gets back to this start point, the user won't perceive um, any change. So yeah, we map, we map the elements into a list and then place that list twice inside the container. You may need to play, put it, place it more than once if you've got a really short list or you can just do what I've done here and spread those ahead of time. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Then if we add in the, the animation code, I've got a prop which says whether it's reversed or not. So let's, let's ignore that for now. What happens is we set up the infinite marquee timeline. I've got a ref that stores this timeline just to force killing it if the props are changed. That might not actually be necessary in in here because the items are unlikely to be changing. So yeah, it's still working as expected. I'll clean that out. Great. So we set it we set it to zero initially, which is really just in case this effect is run more than once, just to force it back to the start. It's got no easing on it and it's got an infinite repeat. Repeat minus one means tells the timeline to, to repeat infinitely. It's then tweening the moving container minus 50%, which is the container that has the two sets of two lists of items. It moves that minus 50% and then sets it back to x percent zero again. Now if we reduce the du duration to say four seconds, 
three, four. So yeah, you can't you can't see any jump. It, it, I mean, at, what, at some point along here, it's going to be sending it back and then continuing, sending it back, continuing, sending it back. In terms of the actual markup, there's a moving container, which we've talked about, and then there's an outer container, which has to have a, a max width with an overflow hidden on it. If there's no overflow hidden on it, then this is just going to go off the side of the screen like that. And the prop for reversing it we have here. So it just starts it at negative 50, moves it to zero, as opposed to starting at zero, moving it to negative 50. Right, so this second one is reversed. <clears throat> if we want to add a hover state or a hover effect to these, we can create an on pointer enter function. Yeah, and basically do this. So I've created another ref for the timeline time scale between. And what GSAP allows you to do is actually, this is probably why I had that in a timeline. <laughs> it lets you uh, tween or basically animate the speed at which the timeline is moving. So setting the timeline to time scale to 0 0.25 is like saying, run this at quarter speed or run this at 10%. So what we can do is when we, when we, um, when the pointer enters, it will then slow down the movement of those. So I'll stick that on here. What we need to do is we need to put the create the ref for the timeline again and sign it here. So yeah, we've got the the main marquee timeline held in this ref. And when the pointer enters, we're just gonna between the, the time scale. So yeah, as you can see now that's moving up slower. We need to do the opposite or leave and return it to regular case. We can also set a duration here. So we could say, let's move it quickly. Uh, let's move it back to its normal speed more quickly. Then we slow it down. Notice if you move really quickly across it, sometimes it can get stuck moving slowly. And I believe this is because it's still, the, these are getting, these are overlapping, these different tweens. So uh, what I would do is just kill that here. Now, now it just ensures that whenever the pointer leaves, it's always going to be killing the 
slow down to return to its normal pace. Finally, I just wanted to show you the fading on the edges. And this, this just looks quite nice, I think. It's essentially a CSS mask image with a linear gradient. You can adjust how near the edge the fade is by changing these values. So now it's just about 5% right on the edge. We could make it really extreme, say 30 and 70. Now it's coming maybe all the way to about here. Uh, yeah, so there we have it. I will clean up the code. It's going to be in the Pragmatic Tutorials GitHub, which I'll link in the description below. And if you made it this far, give it a thumbs up. Um, help me grow the channel. It's much appreciated. Take care.